Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and this is day 12 of the 12 days of junk journal gift ideas. So today, what the collaborators from the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group are to do, including myself, is to create some kind of embellishment book or portfolio, something to hold some, if not all, of the things we've made in the previous 11 days. So definitely check out the description box down below for links to the others that are partaking, as well as any products that I shout out and social media connectors like the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group and my fan page on Facebook, as well as Instagram, Twitter, etc. All right, so I was kind of digging around in my stash to see what I had, and I've come up with, I think I'm going to make an oversized journal cover to start with. This cover is then going to have some components inside so that I can attach somehow, put in pockets, whatever, some of the things that I made. So what I've started with is I've got some chipboard that I have cut into six and a half i think it's six and a half by nine it may be nine and a half let me look here nine and a half so the two pieces that are six and a half by nine and a half one piece that is two inches by nine and a half and then i've got some uh, canvas cloth or duck cloth or a thick muslin some people call it duck cloth and then i've got some scrapbook paper and so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this muslin or uh, duck cloth to part of this chipboard. I plan to cover some of this with um, fabric or paper. No, you know what? I changed my mind. First I'm going to cover this with the paper. Alright, so I've got the first piece here and this is going to be a cover. And I've got this oversized so that I can fold it in. And on this side, that's where the muslin or fabric is going to be. So I'm just going to adhere this piece to the cardstock underneath. This is another way to make journal covers as well. So I've got some really heavy chipboard here or book binders board. You can order some of it off the internet. Um, sometimes I get it because... I recycle things. I uh, used to get a lot of cardboard and chipboard at one of my former jobs. So now what I'm doing, I'm just kind of lining this up on here. I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to crease along each line here. And I'm going to grab some scissors. I have three pairs of scissors and I couldn't find one. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take this and cut it at a diagonal on both of these corners. Next, I'm going to fold this over and really use my bone folder to crease it down. All right, so I've really got that crease down. So now what I want to do is just coat this with some glue and glue it down. All right, so that is one cover done. Now I'm going to do another one. All right, so I've got both the front and the back cover ready. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up this uh, piece of fabric here. It's about four inches wide. Make it as wide as necessary. This is just the size I made in order to fit the thingies that I'm going to put inside of it. <laughs> but if you already are comfortable with making a journal cover, maybe you make it a half an inch or an inch bigger than you normally make it. Okay? That's what I'm going to tell you. I'm trying not to get hung up on, well, it has to be so many inches by so many inches or centimeters, depending on where you're from. Just basically build your own book that will work for what you are working with. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I've got the muslin on the bottom or fabric on the bottom. I'm going to leave a gap in here. And this should have enough fabric 
that it fills the void on the cover and then I'm gonna have another piece that's gonna be on the inside so I'm gonna glue down this center piece I want to make sure there's a gap between the front and the back cover and the spine so that the journal cover has a little bit of movement if you get it too close together then it will bind up and it won't stand or close correctly all right so now I'm just gonna put glue on this piece here I'm just repeating the process on the other side I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to use my bone folder to really press the fabric to that chipboard. It looks like I didn't get enough fabric here at the top, so I may come up with something creative to fix that. I'm going to go ahead and take the other piece of fabric and glue it to the inside in the same fashion. I'm using my bone folder down in the crease there to help with the book cover. I'm doing it on the front and the back, inside and outside. Okay, that's looking good. Let me dig around in my stash and see what I can find that I think would look good on the edges here. Okay, so I found a couple pieces of lace that I thought would be pretty on here, but I want to change the color of them. So I'm going to lay them in my box. And I've got some tattered angels. I've got the Christmas cherry. It's a real pretty pink. And I'm going to spray these pieces of lace and dry them. And then we'll adhere them to the cover. I'm just going to use my heat tool to dry this. I think that is going to look really good right on here. So I'm just going to put some Aline's Tacky Glue. I'll just make a bead right along that edge. And then I'll just place some dots on this lace and glue it down in place. I'm liking the way that looks. All right, let's glue this one down. I like that even though we use the same color of Tattered Angels, the different types of lace accept it differently. So you get, in a sense, different shades, which kind of reminds me of the different shades that are in the cover. And then this should come around the sides that looks pretty good I'm liking it okay so I'm gonna open up the inside and I went ahead and just cut a couple of pieces of cardstock to fit right inside on one side I am gonna add a little pocket here so I'm gonna go ahead and I thought I had another idea I think I still do I've got some ribbon here Let me find another piece because I think I want to use it to help tie some stuff to the inside cover. You're going to have a pocket here, but then we're also going to be able to tie things. So first I'm going to glue down this pocket so it's in place already. My piece is a little bit wider, so I'm just going to trim it off. Okay, so now what I want to do is I've got this ribbon, and I think what I want to do is tape it to the inside here. I may even kind of line them up here and then that way I have this long piece that will tie some of my stuff in so I'm going to grab some of my um, ATG gun here and just kind of make a couple of lines of tape on there and then put down one side and put down the other side by putting such a large amount in there it shouldn't pull out from underneath. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and just tie this in a bow just to kind of help get it out of the way. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and glue it down onto the cover. And then that gives me a pocket and a place to tie things and it covers up the inside. And I just cut it about a quarter of an inch smaller than whatever my cover is. Um, you know, just, you just kind of have to play with it. I'm not all about precise measuring. If you followed me, you've seen me. <laughs> not, I don't get on all about the numbers, y'all. Okay, I haven't completely decided how I want to do this back piece yet because I need to do another component first. So I'm going to wait to glue that down right now and just set this aside. All right, so I have an oatmeal box that I have cut up. So let me show you. It was a think thin oatmeal box and I cut it this way and this way and I kind of tinkered around with it a little bit. My idea was is that 
I would attach these together and when it is mounted in the journal, it will fold over and then fold over again and we'll have these pockets here and then I may put some pockets on this side as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to adhere these together here. I think I'm going to go ahead and trim this down just a smidge. Alright, so what I did was on one piece I creased it, scored it about a quarter of an inch and left a little tab. And then on this piece, I've got half an inch over here, and there's a little tab. And then on this side is a quarter of an inch and a little tab. And so this side is going to get this piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these together right here down the middle. So gluing those together it makes them one piece. So since they're one piece, let's cover this as if it's one piece. So I've got a piece of scrapbook paper that I thought if I did this right I should be able to line this up and glue this whole piece to this piece of scrapbook paper and then I'll be able to use this piece to put into my journal. I may end up putting something on the inside here but for right now what I'm going to do is adhere this down. So I'm just going to put glue all on this side and glue it to the scrapbook piece of paper. I'm just going to use the straight edge in order to line it all up. I'm going to go ahead and trim these pieces here. I'm just trimming it where I see fit um, just to kind of help clean it up a little bit. I think what I want to do is find a little piece of paper to put inside here. So let me look for that and I'll be right back. So I just cut a piece of paper to fit the inside portion so that when we fold this up there's a solid background here and all I'm going to do is just glue this down. I'm going to go ahead and glue the bottom portions up that are pockets. I'll trim this one a little bit. I only put glue on the sides and it'll take it just a little bit for that to dry and then I'm going to practice folding this up just a little bit. Alright, so now I've created this little component here. Now when it's glued down, we should have pockets like that. And then this will go back this way to fit in the journal. So I need to put this along the edge here and I think I'm going to put it closer to the bottom as opposed to the top. And I'll glue this into place and then I'll glue this piece to cover that up and to help secure it into place. I'll, I'll put it in the center. I wasn't going to but now I'm going to put it right in the center. So I'm just going to make sure there's a generous amount of glue right on this little tab. Alright so in theory this will fold over here. I've got a cover here. So now we have the beginnings of what's going to hold some of our goodies, okay? All right, I also made, I've got a couple pieces of cardstock here. One of them I've got about an inch in the center, so I went over five inches and scored, five inches and scored. And then on this one, I went over five and a quarter inches and scored, five and a quarter inches. These were some beat up pieces of cardstock that were laying here on my desk. And my thought was they could go to the front side here and hold embellishments. And then when this closes up, we should have a nice thick book full of things. I've got a couple pieces of cardstock here. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to put cardstock pieces on here. And then I can fold this up to make a pocket on the other side. So let me set this over here out of the way. So I think if I were to put this on here, I can then be able to flip it over and make a pocket. I think what I'm going to do though is I'm going to put glue across here and here and here. And then there'll be a pocket on this side in case we want to put something on there. I don't know. Maybe that's what we'll do. So, cross here, 
And I'm going to use my bone folder here and score this. Apparently get my fingers dirty. And then fold this up. And now there's a self-made pocket. So we can glue this down and we'll have a pocket here. I'm going to go ahead and trim this piece a little bit of a wedge so it doesn't interfere with the spine of this piece. I'm going to repeat this process over here on this side. I think I'm going to leave that part white. I'm just going to glue down the sides here. And then I've got another piece of cardstock. It's going to stick out from the other one, but I'm okay with that. I think it'll look kind of cool with the, the white edge sticking out here. So I'm going to glue this right in the center of this piece. You can stitch it if you want to sew on your sewing machine. You can hand stitch it, but I'm just going to use some Aline's Tacky Glue. All right, so now we have this page this page, this page, and this page, and we'll be able to put pockets in here to hold more stuff. Let's go back to the cover, and I think what I want to do is adhere this closer to the front panel here, so I'm just going to put glue right here and glue this down. All right, I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do is look for some paper to make a couple of pockets on these pages here. And I think I need a pocket here as well as a pocket there. Maybe a pocket on this piece and a pocket over here. So let me look for some paper that I want to use to make some pockets for my book here. Okay, so I went ahead and I found some more cardstock that had some flower prints on them. And I cut them to be just a slightly smaller from each piece that I want to glue it down. So I'm going to glue this down to make a pocket. And I've got another one that I'll glue down as well. Alright, then I'm going to flip this over and I've got a piece here that's going to go on this tab. So we have a pocket here, 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 and here. I didn't put a pocket back here and I may end up doing that because I have a piece left over and I wasn't really sure if it was going to work. And I think that will work. So I'm going to go ahead and use this leftover piece and make a pocket down here. All right, and then I went ahead and I cut pieces to fit on each of these pieces that need pockets. So we're going to start gluing those down. On the inside, I decided I wanted a double pocket. So I'm going to adhere this piece to this back piece, and then I'll adhere the whole thing down. All right, I think I've got the base of my book made here. I may end up wrapping it with a tie of some kind, but I think for the most part, the book itself that's going to hold all the things is ready to be filled. So let me grab all the supplies I plan to put inside and show you what it looks like filled up. Okay, so I am filling up the embellishment book. And I want to be able to put these shaker cards in that I didn't turn into an altar paper clip. I want to whoever gets this to decide how they want to use them. So to get them to fit in here, I found this envelope and I folded up part of it to make a pocket. And then I added a strip of paper about an inch wide and glued it on the front. And now I'm going to put some glue here and glue it into the book. And then I'll put some washi tape on the other side to help adhere it down. And then I'll fold up this piece. So I'm going to put glue right here. And then we're going to put this in the book. Then I'm going to put some washi tape along this edge here. Now I've got a pocket here that you can kind of see in to hold the shaker cards. And this book is very much full. Look how fluffy that is with all the stuff that I put in it. I think I will tie it shut so I'm going to dig around for some ribbon and I'll be right back. Okay so I found some burgundy ribbon and I've kind of tied it so I know where I want it and I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here to hold this ribbon in place. 
and then let's uh, let's look at this. So we're going to pretend it was tied shut at one point, and then we're going to open this up. So, oh, one of my paper clips fell off. Basically, think of this as a temporary housing for all of these goodies in here. So underneath the tie belly band, I made a journal page showing everybody how to make these pockets. And I thought I would go ahead and include that in this embellishment book. Here's another journal page that I made using the cluster little embellishments. This is the little folio that had the stationery and little cards in it. Here's one of the oversized playing cards that I made into a journal card. And I thought all of this, let me change the order, could go right here. We're going to tie this up. I might cut these ribbons. It's okay though. Over here, this is a different version, but I made these little notepads in one of the videos that had a Christmas theme. And after the video was over, I went into my stash and then made some that were kind of floral in theme that I thought would look pretty in a little book like this. This is one of the embellished bulb pen elements and I just put it on with a paper clip so whoever gets this can choose to put it wherever they want. Um, one of these cluster embellishments which could be glued down and made into a pocket but I'm just going to put it in the journal so that whoever gets this can use it. Another journal card here. This was one of my mixed media taking a junk mail postcard and making it into an altered postcard. Over here is some more of the fabric on journal cards. And then another little em cluster embellishment. The little pocket for the shaker cards. I put that in here. It's right in the middle. Some more of the fabric cards and the cluster embellishment. Another of the bulb pins on a paper clip. It's another fabric card, postcard, another cluster embellishment and a journal card, another notepad. Over here, this was altering a invitation pocket to make a little note and then there's a space here for a journal card inside. So just a, some little additive thing that you can use. And I put that right here on this outside area. Another paperclip bulb pen embellishment. And then we flip this over. That's another one of those little a pocket. And then we flip this over. And this is the altered paper or handmade envelopes that I made. And then these were some scraps from cutting up all the pieces. And I thought, why not? They match. Another journal card. Here's a belly band that I started so that they can use one of the embellishment pieces on there. And that is my embellishment book. So if we take this piece, come around. And there we go. It's very fluffy. <laughs> and of course, it'll thin out as you use the components from this and other projects. Well, I hope you enjoyed the 12 days of junk journal gift series that you will, you know, be inspired and create lots of goodies with that. Do check out the other people that created videos as well. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Share any video, any social media post. If you enjoy what someone is doing, share it. That way they are followed by more people and therefore they are encouraged to keep creating content for you and everyone else. What else? Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Do you know I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. where I make junk journals and on Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time where I do mixed media. All right, everybody. Check the description box, the links to all the things I talked about. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time. Bye.